So if you have a wooden gate and you would like it to close reliably, I would highly recommend getting these. This is called the gate spring. It's a lot of different names for it, but essentially it's just a gate spring. If you look on Home Depot or Amazon or something like that, you'll be able to find something very close to this. And what it is, it's a wound spring that connects to the interior. So the actual moving part of the gate, as well as the post here. And uh, one side connects to one, one side connects to the other. It's wound, so this wants to spin in a certain way. And you just make sure that orientation is so that your gate stays shut. I guess theoretically you could do it so your gate wants to open. You would just flip these two or put it on the other side or whatever, depending on your configuration. I guess the other side wouldn't work. You'd have to just flip these two and it would want to pull it open as opposed to pulling it shut in this case. I have this wooden gate, you know, kind of, I guess it's a five foot wooden gate, maybe about a 60 inch. And uh, I want to keep this one shut, prevent, you know, deer or whatever from getting in the yard. So I have one of them. It says about a 16 inch one and uh, it is medium strength and it cost me about 13, $14 on Amazon. You can also find it at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever you have goes into the wood just with two included screws there and then two included screws right here. And then what you do is once the top and bottom are installed, you have this piece and you screw this to either tighten or loosen the spring itself. You have to be really sure you don't over tighten this because you could pop the spring and create uh, something very dangerous. So uh, no more than three flat turns. This is a hex. So uh, no more than one half turn, three flats or one half turn. That's 180 degrees total. Uh, that is as tight as you want to make it. And what you have here is between the flat part of the hex and this back piece is this little metal bar. What you do is you make it flat, then you could slide the bar in here. You just need a crescent wrench in order to take the pressure off, turn it, you know, 10 degrees or whatever. Then you could slide the bar in and out. Uh, but right now it's locked in place. If you want more closing power, you should not over tighten this spring. Again, that's just going to create a dangerous situation. What you want to do is buy a larger spring. So this one is, uh, again, either 14 or 16 inches. I have an auxiliary one down here that is about, I think, 10 or 12 inches. Call it 12 inches. And uh, what you want to do to create more closing strength, again, not over tighten this. You could size up. I thought one 16 inch would be sufficient. Ultimately, I was happier with getting this one, have it not being super tight, and then just spending an extra 10 or 12 bucks on a second one. This is smaller, uh, and I put it at a slightly uh, wider stance. You can see here, not very wide. This one, the front and bottom are a little bit wider. That creates more closing strength. And this one's also not super tight because when you have two, uh, it doesn't have to be as tight. What I found was on a non-windy day, just a very still day, this top one was more than sufficient. But if there's a little bit of wind kicking up against this heavy door and I'm in a windy area, then the uh, basically what would happen would be that it just wouldn't close. And now you could see this thing in action. I could definitely feel some tension. I'll let it go. I'm not pushing it at all. Close as in it locked itself. Uh, this is closing pretty aggressively. I could loosen this up or I could, uh, yeah, I'd probably just loosen up one or two of these a little bit. Uh, so no problem there. Uh, and, you know, the whole thing's fixed for, uh, you know, about 20 bucks, maybe $25, depending on which springs you get and how much they cost in your area. The one thing I would say is that these included screws, I've broken a few of them. If you put this in with an impact driver, you're just going to snap it off. You can see that one I broke and I had to replace it with just like a normal wood screw or whatever. You just have to be a little bit careful dealing with this included hardware because it's fine, but it's not great. So uh, I had no problem with the mounting blade, uh, mounting plate or anything like that. But uh, you will have to be a little bit careful with those uh, screws that they come with. So yeah, that is uh, the easiest way and the most effective way I found to make sure your gate door or your, uh, <laughs> your fence door or your gate, whatever you want to call it, stays shut.